In this video tutorial, I'm going to show you how to do rotoscoping inside Krita. Okay, so for class, um, you basically have three choices to grab your video footage. Um, I'm suggesting YouTube, Vimeo, and of course you can go ahead and um, record your own footage on your phones. So if you're going to start off with YouTube or Vimeo, it does not matter. Um, I'm recommending uh, this website right here to go ahead and get your video. So for instance, if I want to grab from this video, I'll go ahead and grab the address, place it inside here, and hit download mp4. I'll then go ahead and choose download mp4 in HD, so that way I get the highest quality. If you copy from uh, Vimeo and again you're going to copy the address and the only difference here is that when you do paste it inside here I was just curious if it would do it it actually goes to a different um, website but it still lets you download it um, and I would say if it asks you to please select your format um, you can choose the one that says 720p and then you can go ahead and download it. Okay so I've already downloaded one um, from before and what you want to do is you want to come to the uh, we need to trim this um, I'm gonna take the video I'm gonna right click on it and I'm gonna say open with and I'm gonna choose MPEG stream clip now MPEG stream clip is a um, free program it's for Windows and for Mac um, okay so now what you want to do is you want to choose your in point and your out point so um, I'm gonna go ahead and find with my mouse where I want to start and you can also use the arrow keys All right, so let's say for this example, um, I want to start right about here. Okay, so when I reach the starting point, I'm gonna press the letter I for in point. Then I'm gonna go ahead and click and drag and find where I want the video to end. And what you'll also see is down here, um, this is shows you your current time. So let's say I want it to be right here when she reaches the floor. I'll now press O and that's my out point. Okay, so there we are. I've got it. Okay, so now I need to change that. I need to convert that little uh, dark segment down there of the video that I'm interested in and convert it to frames. So I'm gonna to come to my desktop I'm going to right mouse click on the desktop and I'm going to choose new folder and I'm going to go ahead and call this oops I'm going to go ahead and call this roto frames you can really call it anything but as long as you know what it is okay so I'll come back to mpeg stream clip I'm now going to come up to the file menu in mpeg stream clip I'm going to choose export to other formats I'm going to change the format from QuickTime movie to image sequence I'm going to choose option and I'm going to choose JPEG so that way they don't take up too much space and I'll hit OK. I'll now hit OK again and then I will see this window here. Um, I'm going to get rid of this long name and basically this is what all of your frames are going to be called so I could just call this dance if I want and then click on the down arrow here and this part is really important you're going to click on the desktop and you're going to go find the folder where you um, the new empty folder that you just made if you export it to the desktop and you hit save you will have hundreds of icons living on your desktop now which is easy enough to delete but try to avoid that alright so I'm going to go ahead and choose my roto frames folder and I'll go ahead and hit save so now it's going to go ahead and export and it does this 
uh, pass. It does it about two times. So I'll come back when it's ready. Okay, so now it says it's done. So I'll take a look. You always want to take a look at your frames and just see. So I also want to know how many frames I'm importing into Krita. And so it says I've got 97. So that, that'll work just fine for this example. Okay. Um, let's see. The last thing that I should probably check is try to figure out how many frames per second the original video is. Um, and I can do that one of two ways. So what I can do is I can come down here where the uh, playhead is and you'll see right now it says I'm at seven seconds and five frames. And if I go ahead and I press the right arrow key, okay, so you'll see I'm at seven seconds and 24 frames. If I press the right arrow key again, you'll see that it went to eight seconds. So I know for a fact that this particular video is 24 frames per second. If it allowed me to go from 24 to 25 frames up to 29, and then I press the right arrow key again, and it went from 29 frames to zero frames, then I would know that I'm dealing with a 30 frames per second video. Okay, enough of that. I'm now going to open up Krita. And I apologize, I don't have my pen and tablet with me, so when I draw inside Krita, it's going to look pretty lousy, but we'll still be able to do everything. Okay, so here's my animation workspace. I'm just going to do File New. Now, this part is really important. You want to make sure that your dimensions of your uh, piece are the exact same dimensions as the images that you're bringing in. If you don't remember that, just go to your frames, click on a first frame, and um, I'm in column view, and you can see in column view here, it says the dimensions of my frames, and honestly, if you grab um, almost any high def video these days, um, you're probably going to get see these dimensions here. My resolution is 72. My content, uh, two layers. Uh, I'm going with a white color and my image background opacity. Make sure that that is at 100% um, so you get a nice solid color. Okay, so there's my piece. Let me see if I can change that. Okay, so unfortunately, it won't let me change the, um, I can't change the size. Um, and I can't really can't change the recording. So we'll have to see how this works. Yep, it doesn't let me. Okay, I think it'll work for us. Okay, so uh, again, I'm going to name my layers. I'll name my first layer BG for background. I'll name my second layer uh, Anim, because uh, that's going to be the layer that I'm going to be animating and drawing on. And now I'm going to import the actual footage. So I'm going to come up here to File, Import Animation Frames. And I'm going to choose Add Images. I'm going to go find my home folder. Go to my desktop. I'll go to my Roto Frames folder. I'll select any one folder and I'll press on the keyboard. I'll press Command A. Uh, I'm on a Mac computer. And Command A uh, will select them all. I'll choose Open, and I'll choose OK. It'll now import all of the frames. If it doesn't import all of the frames on the first try, then quit out of Krita and um, just open it up again, and then I'll refresh. OK, so you'll see what Krita did was it brought in another layer called Layer 3. I'm going to rename that and call it Roto. There we go. Um, and this is this is optional, but you can select your roto layer and you can lower the opacity of it so that way you can just see things a little bit better. But that's all personal preference. I would then go ahead and lower the roto layer so it's underneath your animation layer. Oop, not your background layer. Um, there you go. You need to remember how many frames you actually have uh, here. So I'm just coming over here and you can see that I ended up with 96 frames. You can see I have 96 blue uh, keyframes down here. 
So I'm going to make sure that I set up my end frame to match how many roto frames I have. So I ended up with 96. There we go. Okay, so now, of course, you want to save. So make sure you do a good save. And then select your anim layer, or whatever you called it. Go back to the start frame 0. And you're going to go ahead and you're going to click to create a new frame. So now I've got a new frame. And I'm on frame 0. And now I could go ahead and draw. And this is the part that is not going to look good because I don't have a tablet, but I'll do it anyway. Okay. So there we go. Looks a little bit like Keith Haring. Um, so now that I've got that, then I can go ahead to my next frame. I can add a new keyframe. I'm going to turn on onion skinning. It looks pretty bad. Um, with rotoscoping, you might actually not need onion skinning, um, at least not all the time. Um, you might want to turn it on every once in a while just to check. Okay, and I'm going to stop after the second frame. I'm going to hide my rotoscoping frame. And now you can see as I go between the two frames, um, I've got the change there. Okay, so I'm going to stop there. And those are the basics of setting up rotoscoping inside Krita. Enjoy and happy rotoscoping.